Hey there. So this is Elior here. And I've been on testosterone for seven weeks now. I haven't done any videos for a little while because things have been really intense around here. Um, so my dad is, um, is sick. He's been diagnosed with cancer. He has uh, kidney cancer and he has lung cancer that are each primary cancers. And he may also, so he has bone cancer, which may be a metastasis or it may be its own cancer. And he also has cancer in his brain. So basically everything is just kind of shutting down. Um, and things have really gone downhill really fast. I mean, we kind of noticed when he moved over here back in July that he was off a bit. Um, but then in like December, January, he was sick with a cough. They thought he had pneumonia, um, but antibiotics didn't get rid of it. And then they did x-rays. Well, no, they did x whatever. They did uh, CT scans and did a biopsy and said, oh yeah, you have lung cancer. And then, uh, they did a PET scan and went, oh shit, you have a lot more than just lung cancer. And then last week he got, um, an MRI actually Monday, Monday of this week, he had an MRI. Yeah. And uh, Wednesday of this week, I drove him, uh, out to Seattle to the VA hospital to check him into the hospital. And he's going to be there at least until Monday or Tuesday, maybe longer. Um, we still don't have even treatment options yet. Um, hopefully, Hopefully by the middle of next week, we'll know what his treatment options are. And then he's got some decisions to make. Meanwhile, um, I've been taking care of him, trying to keep him out of trouble as his cognitive decline really took a nosedive in the last month. Um, I mean, I, <laughs> there's some stories, man. Um, but yeah, it's weird because when he's in the house, mostly he seems pretty normal, um, with just a few kind of humorous, like, yeah, that, he's misremembering something or getting something wrong, right? When you go out of the house and he's in a more, um, kind of new, unfamiliar environment, that's when it really shows. And sometimes... Sometimes when he gets confused, he gets really upset, like yelling angry because he's confused. And um, I've been able to defuse that partially by jumping in and taking care of things and then calmly reminding him that it's okay, that I'm there to help him get through it. Um, this is all super hard because I do not have a great relationship with my dad. Um, you know, I see all these people talking about, you know, after their parents pass away, they're like, oh, you know, this person was the greatest person in my life, such a great influence and such a wonderful mom or a wonderful dad. Like, I don't have that relationship with either of my parents. Um, both of my parents have done some really crappy stuff. Um, and I've spent a lot of time working on, um working on having the healthiest relationship I can with my parents, um, within certain boundaries to try to keep myself safe. Um, and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of description of what that means right now. Maybe in the future I will, because it, I think this is a topic that could be really helpful to other people who have difficult relationships with their parents where, they may at times become unsafe because of their parents. Um, you know, not, not only physically, although yes, also physically unsafe, but also emotionally unsafe is also a kind of unsafe. Um, 
So right now, one of the problems is that my dad's boundaries, which are already kind of not great to begin with, are really gone. And so I've been having a lot of really uncomfortable situations with my dad where like I'm doing something in the kitchen. He's like whoo, six inches away from me. It's like, dad, go sit down at the table. I will bring you a plate. And he goes and he sits down and literally seconds after sitting his butt in the chair, he gets back up and he's right, whoo, right there again. It's like, dad, sit down. <laughs> I'll bring you your food in a minute. Uh, he also, um, has been spending several hours a day, every day in my bedroom, sleeping in my bed. Um, and I pointed out that if he's lonely, that what he should do is spend time with the family, like six grandkids and three other adults in this house. Well, two other adults besides him and me, um, you know, there's no reason to be lonely. There's lots of people. You don't have to only attach yourself to me. And he's like, but I don't want to spend time with the whole family. I just, I have so much good feeling and warmth and affection for you. And I just want to spend time with you. And I'm just like, do you not see what the problem is here, dad? <sighs> like, these are your grandchildren and great grandchildren. Spend some time with them. Maybe get to know them a little better. Interact with them. Also, I am not your girlfriend. This, this like attaching yourself to me is a little weird and creepy. Um, he has made it clear that he does not think it's weird and creepy and that I am overreacting. Uh, but my son and my daughter-in-law have watched the interactions and thankfully they're very supportive of me and they're like, yeah, no, he's being creepy. Also, when I came out to him as trans, he was super supportive and really great and even introduced me to some people as his son. And then uh, around three or four weeks ago, he started going back to like half the time calling me his daughter and then he started calling me, um, <laughs> like not just my dead name, but like Nick, old, old nicknames from when I was a little kid and, um, and going on about how important it is to him to have a daughter. He's been, in other words, aggressively misgendering me. Um, and also in conversations that he's been having with doctors directly in front of me, um, both aggressively misgendering me and also making a big deal about how really sweet and warm and kind and caring his daughter is. Meanwhile, his daughter really wants to thr throttle him, or I should say his son. <laughs> his son would really like to throttle him. Let me not misgender myself just because somebody else is misgendering me. Whew. Yeah. So it's been pretty tough. Um... Yeah, I'm a little bit hesitant to post this because there is a chance he might find this video before, you know, before he completely loses it, what capacity he's got left, which interestingly, like I said, he's, he's actually got a lot of capacity left as long as he's within a comfortable kind of familiar space. Um, it's just sort of the cognitive overload of being in an unfamiliar space kicks him over the edge. Um, anyway, um, I'm not saying anything here that I haven't already said to him. So I guess if he can't handle it, he can't handle it. Um, and I'm not exactly telling him about this channel. So if he finds it, it's cause he's looking for it. Um, yeah, so it's been really hard and stressful. Um, also, on in the good news department, I have a new grandbaby. Um, my my son and daughter-in-law um, got their 
excuse me, sixth baby, sixth between the two of them. It's a blended family. It's their first together. Um, so my sixth grandbaby uh, was born on, what day was that? Monday, March the 29th. Yeah. Woot. And she is adorable. She is so cute. And my son was really sweet. When they brought her home, they were like, this one, you get to be Saba from the very beginning. <laughs> Which was pretty great. Um, the other kids have always called me Safta, which means grandma in Hebrew. And um, the oldest kid has started calling me Saba already, but the other kids are still calling me Safta, which is fine. I told I told all of my children and, um, and also I told my grandson, like, hey, you can call me whatever you want because the, the relationship name to me is, it's not the same as like a gendered term. It's about the relationship. So you can call me what feels good to you in terms of recognizing the relationship. Um, and I think it's really, really sweet that 11 year old grandson just instantly switched over to Saba. Like, yep. Okay. You're my Saba now. That's great. Um, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so it's pretty hectic around the house. Um, this week I did two round trips to Seattle, one on Tuesday to pick up a bus because with <laughs> six children and four adults, uh, there is no single vehicle of like just an ordinary vehicle that fits everybody. So now we have a 14 seater bus with a wheelchair lift. Uh, we picked it up in, um, in Federal Way, Washington on Tuesday, drove there in the morning and drove back. I drove the car back and my son drove the bus back with, uh, his partner and a couple of the kids. Um, the other kids were all over at their other houses that day. Uh, and then this weekend we took a trip uh, out to a nearby park for a picnic and, and a hike and we were able to use the um, the wheelchair lift to get the stroller onto the back of the bus without any problem and all the kids have their seats with their little seat belts and everybody was super excited and it it's really weird because we're in a small town where there's not a whole lot of public transportation so it's also a little bit weird that we're driving around in in a bus that looks like, you know, like a bus. <laughs> yeah, but it's just our, you know, it's our family car now. Um, but anyway, kind of cool, kind of fun. Um, and it was great to get to go do that this weekend. Um, so yeah, that's my update, and um, I don't think my voice sounds any different at this point. Maybe, maybe you'll notice a difference. I I don't think that there's any difference in my voice. Mm, I think I look a little bit different, but not by much. Other people are saying that they're noticing changes in me, but I'm not noticing so much changes. Um, other than that, transition is going fine. Um, you know, it's still COVID time, so it's not like I'm hanging out with a lot of people in person. Mostly it's all online stuff. So who knows what life will be like when I see humans in person, humans who know me already in person. Um, all these trips out to Seattle and stuff have been, yeah, I've, I've seen humans, but They've been mostly strangers. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm probably going to be going back and forth to Seattle a bunch more in the next few weeks or months because my dad's treatment is out there in Seattle. And I just hope that I can uh, hold it together to actually get work done. 
because that is the one thing that has really completely just that the entire juggling set of balls or pins or rings or whatever the hell I was juggling when it comes to work it's it's all on the floor man like <laughs> i've got to i've got to pick it up and figure out even what it was that i was juggling so that i can get back to work uh yeah so i'll try to do these updates i will try to do these updates every week but if you don't see me for a few weeks in a row just know that things are real right now uh yeah and we'll make it through yeah always do so thanks for listening and um i'll see you in the next one you take care <laughs>